Hello, and welcome to the Awareness Online Learning Violence in the Workplace Risk Assessment Tool. Before we begin to see how to use the various violence in the workplace risk assessment tools that are available, let's take a moment and come up with an understanding of what the different elements are when it comes to risk. Workplace violence has become a significant occupational health and safety issue within the health and community services sector of Nova Scotia. Every day, health and community service workers encounter a variety of challenging situations that expose them to risks of workplace violence. Exposure to workplace violence can leave long-lasting physiological and physical effects to both the individual and the entire workplace environment. To combat these threats, employers need to develop and manage an effective workplace violence program in order to keep their employees safe from harm. One effective strategy that your employer can do to combat these threats is conduct a violence in the workplace risk assessment. This module will look at how you can use the Awareness Workplace Violence Risk Assessment to keep your organization safe from workplace violence incidents by assessing the various types of potential workplace violence hazards. Today's presentation will look at what is risk, what is a violence risk assessment, risk assessment legislation, the awareness workplace violence risk assessment tool, and what happens after the risk assessment. Before we begin to see how to use the various violence in the workplace risk assessment tools that are available, Let's take a moment and come up with an understanding of what risk is. Risk is the chance or probability that a person will be harmed or experience an adverse health effect if exposed to a hazard. To better understand this concept, let's take a look at what the difference is between the terms hazard and harm. There are many definitions for hazard, but the most common definition when talking about workplace health and safety is a hazard is any source of potential damage or harm or adverse health effects on something or someone. Harm, on the other hand, is the effect on something or someone from being exposed to a particular hazard. For example, let's say a healthcare worker receives a pulled shoulder muscle caused by an aggressive and confused resident grabbing them. The hazard in this situation would be the aggressive and confused resident while the harm would be the pulled shoulder muscle received by the healthcare workers. A workplace violence risk assessment is a systematic assessment process designed to assist an organization in assessing the hazard of workplace violence and to identify possible measures, procedures, and controls that can be implemented to control the risk of violence in the workplace. A risk assessment assesses hazards in order to calculate the risk level a hazard poses in the workplace. It does this by looking at the relationship between the probability or the likelihood of an incident happening with the severity known as the amount of harm that is created when exposed to a hazard. Factors that influence probability and severity of risk are the nature of the exposure, how much a person is exposed to a hazardous thing or condition, for example, several times a day or once a year, how the person is exposed, like breathing in vapor or skin contact, and also the severity of the effect. The benefits that an organization can obtain from an effective risk assessment are identifying who may be at risk, determining whether a control program is required for a particular hazard, determining if existing control measures are adequate or if more should be done, preventing injuries or illnesses, especially when done at the design or planning stage, prioritizing hazards and control measures, and meeting legal requirements where applicable. To learn more on what hazards and risks are, you should consider taking the Awareness How to Use the Risk Matrix Tool online course or attend the half-day Hazard Identification and Workplace Inspection Classroom course. For this module, all we need to understand is that risk is the relationship between the probability of a hazard occurring and the severity or level of harm that a hazard can cause. So what do we mean by Workplace Violence Risk Assessment? 
As we saw earlier, a risk assessment is an overall systematic process that identifies the risk of a hazard in your workplace. A violence in the workplace risk assessment is therefore an assessment that considers all the hazards as they relate to workplace violence, categorizes them, and ranks them by priority and aids in providing controls to prevent or reduce exposure. It does this by first identifying workplace hazards and risk factors that have the potential to cause harm, then calculate and prioritize the workplace risks associated with the hazard, and finally determine the appropriate controls to use in order to eliminate the workplace hazards or control the risk when the hazard cannot be eliminated. So what does this mean? This means that the risk assessment tool is going to develop an accurate prioritized list of hazards that could cause harm to its employees. This will, in turn, make it easier for the organization to put the appropriate control measures in place that will keep their employees safe from harm. The Violence in the Workplace Regulations of Nova Scotia outline what an employer must follow when it comes to addressing workplace violence in their workplace. For this module, we will be specifically looking at what the regulations require when we are addressing and conducting a workplace violence risk assessment. To learn more about other requirements outlined in the Violence in the Workplace legislation, you can take the Awareness Online Learning module focused on the workplace violence regulations. When it comes to assessing workplace violence, the regulations state that an employer must conduct a violence risk assessment for each of their workplaces to determine if there is a risk of violence in the workplace. They must also prepare a written report concerning the violence risk assessment, detailing the extent and nature of any risks identified by the assessment. This means that employers who have multiple facilities within their organization must conduct a separate risk assessment for each facility. For example, if a long-term care organization is comprised of multiple facilities, each facility needs to conduct a risk assessment in order to determine its own risks of violence and must also prepare a written report detailing the extent and nature of any identified risks of violence from each facility it assessed. Regardless of what type of organization you work for, the regulations require that all employers must consider the following factors when conducting the risk assessment. A. Violence that has occurred in the workplace in the past. B. Violence that is known to occur in similar workplaces. C. The circumstances in which work takes place. D. The interactions that occur in the course of performing work. And E. The physical location and layout of the workplace. As we saw earlier, a variety of factors need to be considered when conducting a risk assessment. When it comes to the healthcare and community service sectors, there are a number of unique considerations that your employer may need to look at. Some of these include outside locations, medication storage and distribution, safe handling and mobility of individuals, transportation of people and items, systems for call for assistance, working in remote locations, cash handling procedures, working alone, and also working at night. Even though it is ultimately your employer's responsibility for ensuring a risk assessment is completed, your employer must consult and provide a copy of the risk assessment report to any committee or safety representative at the workplace for their review. In addition to identifying new hazards, there are instances when your employer may need to conduct a new risk assessment. The regulations specify that your employer must conduct a new risk assessment when the employer becomes aware of a type of violence occurring in similar workplaces that was not taken into consideration when the previous risk assessment was conducted or when five years pass since the risk assessment has been done. In addition, an employer must also conduct a new violence risk assessment when there is a significant change in any of the following. The circumstances in which work takes place, the interactions that occur in the course of performing work, the physical location or layout of the workplace, the employer plans to construct a new facility or renovate an existing facility,
and if the employer is ordered to do so by an officer. The risk of violence occurring in the workplace is linked to a number of factors found in the work environment. These include the nature of the workplace, which considers the physical aspects of the workplace, whether it is a building, construction site, vehicle, or forest. This may include workplace lighting, lines of sight, depth of counters, entrances, exits, and objects that could be used to hurt employees. Also, the type of work, which refers to the activities performed by employees and the sector of work and people with whom employees interact. And then also the conditions of work, which refer to other aspects such as hours worked, the surrounding neighborhood, and whether employees move from location to location, work alone, or in isolation. Some specific factors related to health care that need to be considered may include system for calling help, cash handling procedures, band procedures, law enforcement relationship, medication storage and distribution, transportation of people and items, outside locations, public areas and common areas, security systems, internal and external lighting, workstations, and tools. Now that we have an understanding of what we may need to consider when conducting a risk assessment, let's start to take a look at how we can apply the Awareness Violence in the Workplace Risk Assessment Tool. The Risk Assessment Tool is an interactive spreadsheet that will provide you with a step-by-step -step process for conducting the risk assessment. Each step includes instructions on the different strategies that can be applied in order to complete the assessment. When you have completed all the steps, the results of the assessment will identify possible gaps in already existing controls or where additional controls may need to be added. The risk assessment tool is comprised of a series of tabs located at the bottom of the tool. Each tab corresponds to a particular aspect or task of the risk assessment. Starting on the process tab, the assessment should be conducted by finishing each tab in order. The template is interactive, which means each tab has a field that can be filled by the members of the assessment team or for easier reviewing and organizing. If an organization wishes, they may also print the entire assessment and use a paper copy. Now that we have an understanding of how to use the assessment, let's take a look and discuss strategies for completing each tab. The assessment tool performs five basic tasks. These include first picking an assessment team, gathering all required information, conducting the assessment, developing an action log, and then finally signing off on the assessment. Now let's take a look at the various components of the tool. The process tab. The first tab you will use in the tool will be the process tab. As you can see from the illustration, this is where the organization's information is entered. One area that is worth mentioning is the assessment location field. As we've seen earlier, an organization may have a variety of facilities or locations that may need an assessment completed. This field will allow organizations to keep track and organize specific locations that require assessment. On the right of the page, you will notice that the entire process for the assessment tool is listed in order. Each step is hyperlinked to that particular section of the assessment making for easier navigation. Step 1. Who will be completing the risk assessment? The Step 1 tab of the assessment directs the employer to determine who will be selected to take part in conducting the assessment. It provides an area for the employer to list these individuals. As you can see from the illustrations, the form not only lists the name of the individual assessors, but also provides spaces to indicate their position, department, or work location, and if they are a member of the Joint Occupational Health and Safety Committee or not. Although optional, it is considered a leading practice to establish a dedicated workplace violence committee. For example, this could be your Joint Occupational Health and Safety Committee, otherwise known as JOSH, or a risk assessment team that would report directly to the employer.
The duties of this committee will be to assess the vulnerability to workplace violence at the current work sites and provide recommendations to the employer on preventative actions to be taken. The committee should be comprised of competent individuals who have good knowledge about the hazards being assessed, any situations that might occur, and the protective measures appropriate to that hazard or risk. Therefore, a mixture of individuals from a variety of departments which may include employees, supervisors, Josh committee members, health and safety representatives, and or unions. This allows for a more balanced and comprehensive view of the workplace in regard to workplace violence. Step two, gathering relevant information. Step two of the risk assessment tool deals with determining what relevant information is needed to be gathered for the assessment. At this point, all relevant documentation should be gathered and provided to the assessors or assessment team so that they can review documents for reports of incidents involving workplace violence. The Step 2 tab of the assessment provides the assessment team with a generic list of information that an organization may need to consider when deciding on what information should be evaluated. Not only does this section provide suggestions for relevant information, but it also consists of a number of fields where the assessment team can record a variety of information. This includes what and when information was reviewed and records the findings and trends of the information reviewed. Some of the suggested information that the tool lists include security safety checks, existing policies, procedures, or work practices, feedback from company suggestion boxes, incident reports, accident investigations, training records, minutes from committee meetings, community information, violence in similar workplaces, workplace inspection reports, or workers' compensation board claims. This list of considerations is only a suggested list of what an organization may wish to consider. The assessment team will need to determine which areas they will consider and determine if they wish to add any additional considerations to their list. Step 3. Conducting the assessment. As we have seen earlier, a risk assessment first identifies, then assesses and prioritizes hazards, and then determines the appropriate controls needed. The next three tabs of the risk assessment will aid the assessment team to perform the three steps, but will focus on those factors that contribute to workplace violence. As stated before, the healthcare and community services sectors pose a number of significant challenges that need to be taken into consideration when looking at workplace violence. The following activities or circumstances may increase the risk of workplace violence. Community-based work, transporting people or goods, mobile workplaces, working with individuals with challenging or responsive behaviors, working alone, dispensing medications, tobacco, or alcohol, handling cash, or protecting or securing valuables. To make things easier for the assessment team, the risk assessment tool divides these considerations into two different sections, one for assessing the physical environment and the other for assessing the internal measures and procedures. As you can see from the example, these sections have a number of fields that the assessment team will utilize. The first field is the hazard category. It lists a particular hazard consideration that the assessment team must analyze. For this example, we look at the building's entrance and security systems. Next is the controls in place field. It lists a number of suggested items that the assessor may need to consider when it comes to that particular hazard category. For this example, we can see that the assessor may want to consider looking at employee IDs alarms, are there mirrors present, is there a security guard, and a number of other factors. The assessment team may need to adjust or change these factors depending on their particular circumstances. The applicable field allows the assessment the option to mark the particular consideration as relevant to the assessment. If this is clicked to no, it will not be considered when the assessment is calculated.
Next we have the risk significance section. This section is where the risk factor for each of the hazards is calculated in order to determine its level of priority. Ranking or prioritizing hazards is one way to help determine which risk is the most serious. By assigning a priority to the risks, you are creating a ranking of what risks need to be dealt with first. Assessors will need to determine what probability and severity values that particular hazard category is for their circumstance. As we can see from the example, the risk assessment tool uses both probability and severity values when it calculates its risk factor value. As we saw earlier, risk is a relationship between probability and severity. There is no one simple or single way to determine the level of risk, nor will a single technique apply in all situations. Ranking hazards requires the knowledge of the workplace activities, urgency of situations, and most importantly, objective judgment. But if your organization does not have its own risk value method, the Step 3 tab of the assessment provides a risk matrix process that can be utilized. It consists of a number of tables and instructions that will aid the risk assessment team in determining risk factor values. To learn more on how to use and apply the risk matrix process, you may wish to take the Awareness Online Learning How to Use the Risk Matrix tool. The last field is where the assessment team will list any recommendations on what control methods they feel are needed to eliminate or reduce the hazard. It should be mentioned that controls need to be able to eliminate or reduce the level of risk to an acceptable level for workers to perform their duties safely. Now let's take a look at another example to see how this process works. In this example, the assessment team considered if employees administrate any forms of restricted goods. Step 1. Next, they considered the controls in place. Step 2. For this example, we will say that the team determined the only restricted goods were medications given out by staff to residents. Next, they determined this hazard was applicable for this assessment, which is step 3. Then, the team determined that the probability of improper contact or use of the drugs and the severity of the improper contact of the drug, for example, if they were stolen, and they were both placed at 5. This calculated to a risk factor of 25. Step 4. The team therefore made a number of recommendations based on a number of deficiencies they identified when it came to the medications. Step 5. These included new policies on how medications are recorded and dispensed, moving the cabinet to a more secure location in the nurse manager's office, it would be safer to have the medications delivered instead of having staff pick them up, and all the staff need to be trained on the new policy and procedures. The Action Log After identifying, prioritizing, and compiling the necessary recommendations, the Risk Assessment Tool will direct the assessment team to develop an Action Log. An Action Log is a plan on how you are going to address each of your recommendations. The benefit of an action log is it provides the assessment team with an organized method for ensuring that the identified hazards are addressed correctly and in the proper order. The action log should address the various hazard categories identified, the various controls and how these controls will be implemented, who is responsible to address the recommendation, the risk level associated with the hazard, the date the control was completed, and verify when and how that the implemented controls adequately addressed all the hazards identified. As illustrated above, the Step 4 tab of the assessment provides the assessment team the ability to list all the necessary information for developing an action log. In this example, we can see that the assessment team had identified that additional lighting was needed in the parking lot and that Fred Spencer had completed the action and the additional follow-up was conducted. By creating the action log and using the various fields, the assessment team was ensured that the hazard was adequately dealt with. Sign off. The final
The final step of the assessment is on the Step 5 tab, which deals with the final signing off of the assessment. The assessment tool provides the team and all relevant individuals and site locations to sign off, declaring they agree with the assessment and its results. After the assessment. Even though the assessment of workplace violence hazards is an important part of making the workplace safe, it is only one part of the overall process when dealing with workplace violence prevention. At this point, your organization will now have to take the results of its assessment and begin the process of developing what is called the Workplace Violence Prevention Plan. The Violence in the Workplace regulations state that an employer must establish and implement a workplace violence prevention plan for each workplace for which a significant risk of violence is identified through a violence risk assessment or for any workplace that an officer orders a plan for. A workplace violence prevention statement or policy should be your organization's plan of action, describing how the workplace violence prevention plan will be managed and executed. The policy should state the employer's commitment to violence prevention and outline all responsible and accountable parties for the program. For more information on how to develop a workplace violence prevention plan, you may want to consider downloading and using the Awareness Workplace Violence Prevention Template and Program Guide, which you can find on the Workplace Violence Prevention page of the website. These consist of a template and guide that organizations can modify and develop to their own workplace violence program. As you can see, workplace violence poses a significant risk to the health and well-being of health and community service workers throughout Nova Scotia. By using a well-developed violence in the workplace risk assessment tool, your employer can now effectively identify what risks of violence employees will be exposed to and will be able to implement the necessary controls that will effectively keep you and your coworkers safe from harm. We would like to thank you for taking the Awareness Online Learning Violence in the Workplace Risk Assessment Tool. Please check out the other free online courses we offer or the resources found under the Programs tab on the Awareness website. To get a certificate for this online course, please continue on to the quiz by clicking below.